Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. A vacant house is turned to rubble in a devastating explosion. Now city crews and investigators working to find the cause of the accident and clean up that damage. A nationwide bank partners with a local museum to educate children. Organizers say their main goal is to inspire curiosity in different careers. A nationwide event allows people to have coffee with law enforcement agents. Officers in the state line hope their event creates a positive relationship with those they meet. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tom Lewis. Thank you for joining us for Eyewitness News at 5. Mimi Murphy and Eric Wilson are both off today. An early morning blast levels a Rockford house and damages several other homes. Now, this happened just after 1 o'clock this morning on 15th Avenue. That is near Kishwaukee and Broadway. Fire crews arrived to find the remnants of the home on fire. It was unoccupied. No injuries have been reported. Many neighboring houses have suffered damage to their windows, doors, and siding. One Rockford fire arson investigator calls the scene catastrophic. The roof was blown up off the structure. The front of the building uh, actually shot forward into some other stuff. As you can see, uh, you have the window frame up and the, the electrical power, uh, power lines. Um, just basically just a, just a catastrophic failure. Unfortunately, this stuff does happen. Um, this, is, this is definitely one of the larger ones I've seen. Now that portion of 15th Avenue was closed for the day as cleanup is underway. It has since reopened. This morning's explosion has left those living in the neighborhood shaken. Nikel Delgado is live on 15th Avenue. Nikel, I understand you spoke with some neighbors and uh, what are they saying? That's right, Tom. As you can see behind me, the area is now fenced off. What used to be a home is now complete rubble. I talked to neighbors earlier today. They did tell me that they are stunned and in disbelief of this explosion. I was up <laughs> eating and uh, all of a sudden uh, I heard a loud bang. It was just it shook the whole house. In your 27 years of living in Rockford, have you ever experienced anything like this or? Never. This is the first time something like this I've actually experienced it. Being close to the scene of witness and being on the scene ever. Neighbors heard and felt the house explosion on 15th Avenue. Some thought it was a mini earthquake. Others thought it could be a breaker box that blew out. We heard of. Uh, like I said, power boxes being blown or a car hit a pole or something. But for a house to actually just blow up, yeah, it's, that's definitely beyond uh, measuring me everything I've ever you know, experienced. That. From broken windows and trees to debris covering the streets and surrounding homes, Veterans Drop-In Center is on the same block as where the house was leveled. It's perplexing, to be honest with you, because you would have never expected it. Not here, not over here. Lana tells me this is a tight-knit community. Their biggest concern was the children, elderly, and homeless that come through here every day. This is proof that there's a higher power because the people next to that building had just moved out. Now that building that exploded, it's been empty. Both Lana and Charles tell me they will be on the lookout and hope this is a one-time incident. It's something that concerns us. Being on the watch, I may be looking for anything suspicious because we think you know, we see you got the neighborhood watch sign right here, you know. So neighbors looking out for each other, anything suspicious. I did talk to the property owners of what of now what is now been destroyed. They declined to do an on-camera interview, but they did say they are at a loss of words of what has happened here today. The cause of the explosion is still under investigation. Reporting live in Rockford for your home team, I'm Nikel Delgado. Nikel, thank you for that update. A mobile learning center visits a local museum. PNC Bank's mobile learning adventure was at the Discovery Center this morning. This is a traveling exhibit that provides parents the opportunity to learn about the importance of childhood education. Kids were able to dress up as different professionals while parents were able to take home activity books and learning kits on how to turn everyday moments into learning opportunities. Discovery Center staff says it's crucial to reach kids at a young age and inspire them. We are always thrilled to partner with organizations that understand the importance of uh, early learning, of, of, of inspiring uh, curiosity, and uh, showing children what it might be like to have a variety of different uh, roles when they grow up, whether that's teacher, fireman, uh, doctor, postman, you know, whatever the case may be. 
The MLA is part of the Grow Up Great initiative, which focuses on preparing young children for success in school and life. Law enforcement agencies all around the nation look to connect with the community. Today is Coffee with the Cop Day. It's a nationwide event seeking to bring together law enforcement and the communities that they help. Rockford police officers could be seen at six different locations around town like Katie's Cup and Wired Cafe. One police sergeant hopes these relaxed conversations will create a more positive feeling in the state line. Coffee with a Cop is a chance to further engage with the community and create positive relationships and also bonds with people in the community. And again, we're your personal police officers for the day at this moment, so it's your time to come and speak with us, get to know us as individuals, and we can also get to know you as well. The Lloyd Police Department and the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office also held their own Coffee with a Cop event. The Riverview Ice House is now set to reopen. We're going to hear from officials on the new renovations made to that sports staple. Our weather for the most part has cooperated today. We've had a little more cloud cover, but also some sunshine. Not as much rainfall, which is good for some activities that are taking place here uh, downtown Rockford. But we will see maybe a small chance for a shower later this evening. I'll time that out and have more on the cool down coming up in the forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News. You're a home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lever, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, the Riverview Ice House's new renovations have just been revealed, and our very own Jess Lipson is out at the block party ahead of the Ice Hogs preseason game. What's it looking like out there, Jess? Tom, uh, behind me, the reopening of the Riverview Ice House just took place. A nice crowd came out to welcome back the staple in Rockford that was built back in 1975. The $9 million renovations were necessary to keep the facility afloat. There were enhancements to the refrigerator system, hockey boards, and more. The Park District said it was an important project to reiterate their commitment to the hockey in the community, which is ever-growing, and the Ice Hogs are glad to be a part of it as well. And Speaking of Lice Hogs, they'll drop the puck for their sold out preseason game tonight. Until then, though, there's food trucks, inflatable hockey rink, and so much fun going on over here at the Riverview Ice House. For now, reporting live for your home team, I'm Jess Lipson. Back to you, Tom. All right, Jess, lace up those skates, get on the ice with the Ice Hogs. Thank you so much. The warm stretch of temperatures looks to be coming to an end. Coming up next, we'll hear from Candace on our chances of rain tonight ahead of a rather cool weekend. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Our weather photo, our fall weather picture. Uh, Cynthia Simmons sharing this picture uh, here with us of the fall spooky decoration. So thank you, Cynthia, for sharing in that photo. If you have any weather photos you would like to share, weather at WTVO.com, we would love to get those pictures in. Now let's talk sky conditions because we have had more cloud cover um, across the region from north, south, east to west. And our skies are expected to stay mostly cloudy here as we go through the better part of this evening. Now you see some of those rain showers there that are moving down to the south near St. Louis and into the uh, southern Missouri. Those are all expected to stay to our south. That cold front stretching off to the west, eventually that'll work in our direction later this evening. And ahead of that, we could see a spotty shower or two, but the chance for that does stay on the lower end. 78 our temperature in Freeport, 80 right now in Rockford, 78 in Rochelle, and 75 degrees right now in DeKalb. Winds, they've been a little breezy, shifting around to the southwest at 5 to 15 miles per hour. We've had some gusts today close to 25. We take a live look out west. 
west over the Park Hills golf course there in Freeport. Mostly cloudy skies should still feel fairly comfortable through this evening. Now this morning temperatures stayed in the upper 60s, but tonight we are going to drop into the 50s here for the overnight with a small shower chance developing. Tomorrow that temperature will climb to 74. I think we see a fair amount of sunshine tomorrow afternoon as the wind picks up from the west and northwest, but it will be windy. Winds will be gusting at about 25 miles per hour. Let's time out any rain chances here on Futurecast. Notice we hold on to that southwesterly wind throughout this evening. That'll shift around to the northwest tomorrow. There you see a couple of showers try to develop as that cold front passes through early tomorrow. So stretching from McHenry County down through DeKalb County and even Lee County could see a shower or two. And we may extend that back here a little further to the west near Rockford. Drier skies for tomorrow. Westerly winds as temperatures make it into the low to mid 70s. Now that second cold front comes in tomorrow late afternoon and evening that could bring another round of some light rainfall tomorrow evening but the chill really sets in behind that look at those temperatures we are in the 40s going thursday night into friday friday will be a brisk day notice those scattered rain showers wind driven rain showers too as that northwesterly wind comes in and our temperatures will struggle to even make it out of the mid and upper 50s on friday so quite a difference and quite a different feel it will be on Friday compared to what we've wrapped up here with these 80 degree temperatures the last several days. Now we are going to see those numbers drop into the 50s by the time we get into the weekend. There is still going to be some wind and I think our skies both Saturday and Sunday we see a fair amount of cloud cover rather than sunshine. So that could help limit the frost potential especially Saturday night into Sunday but there looks like we'll see those numbers back into the 60s by the time we get into next week. All right, thanks so much for that update, Candace. Well, Scott will be in studio next. The sports, he'll tell us what the Ice Hogs coaches are expecting for tonight's preseason game. And just might Matt Eberflus's job, Eberflus's job, be on the line tomorrow night. Bears are taking the field against Washington. We'll find out. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. A lot of us are hungry for some live hockey action, and it's going to return tonight in downtown Rockford. As you heard earlier, the Ice Hogs will play a preseason game at the Riverview Ice House against the Iowa Wild. The Ice Hogs only opened training camp on Monday, so they're trying to come together quickly. The coaches aren't as worried about the outcome tonight as they are just getting the guys used to game speed and getting them used to playing in the Ice Hogs system. I asked Coach Sorensen this week how he's approaching this game and the Ice Hogs' second preseason game this weekend in Iowa. We want to take a look at some of these guys um, that are in camp here, uh, try to get everybody in the game at least each so we get a feel for them. Um, that's the biggest thing for us. How challenging is it for a, a really a bunch of new guys coming together in a short span where you've only got basically a week and a half to get ready for the season? How challenging is that to come together so quickly? Yeah, um, I think it's just kind of the culture around hockey is that the guys in that group and the guys that you meet, uh, you become pretty close to pretty quickly. This group especially, I think we've all come together, everyone's met everybody, and uh, I think we'll be able to really gel in these preseason games and, and have a good showing. Well, the Ice Hogs regular season will open October 13th in San Jose. Their home opener will be Saturday, October 21st against the Chicago Wolves. Now, there are rumblings that the Bears game tomorrow night against the Commanders could be Matt Eberflus's last as the team's head coach. That's if the Bears are embarrassed again. Eberflus knows there's a lot riding on this game for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's important, right? All of them are important. You know, so we're putting everything into this, all of our energy, you know, all of our, uh, you know, passion into it because it takes all that. It takes all, your, all of our focus uh, to get this done, and the guys are wired in. The Bears will not have Eddie Jackson or Jalen Johnson in uniform again tomorrow night. They have been ruled out. Tevin Jenkins and Jaquan Brisker are listed as questionable. There will be more baseball in Milwaukee this evening. The Brewers and Diamondbacks will play the second game of their wild card series. And the pressure is already on the Brewers after they lost last night. So if they lose tonight, they're done. And they'll be facing the Diamondbacks ace, Zach Gallen. He's a Cy Young candidate with 17 wins. This afternoon, the Rangers eliminated the Rays 7-1. The Rangers will next face the Baltimore Orioles. At sports, we'll be right back.
Well, the music has happened down here a little bit uh, downtown Rockford at the Riverview Ice House. Uh, good evening to be out too as the rain has held off for most of the afternoon. We may still see a small shower chance as we get into the evening. Otherwise, our skies are expected to stay mostly cloudy. Temperatures, they've been uh, steady in the upper 70s and low 80s. We'll see those numbers a little cooler than what we woke up to here this morning, upper 60s uh, early this morning, down about 57 degrees overnight. The first warm interactive radar shows some of those showers down to the south with the cold front still to the west. There is that chance again, as I mentioned, we may see a shower or two this evening. Tomorrow we'll manage to make it into the low to mid 70s. There will be some sunshine for the afternoon though as we spend most of our Thursday dry. Notice the temperatures will be dropping back then once we get into Friday and the weekend. All right, thanks so much for the update, Candace. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.